today we are going to start with the laplace transform right so this is one of the most easiest topic so this is one of the most easiest topic here first of all why do we need to learn laplace transform is there any specific reason why we are learning laplace transforms in mathematics what is the great advantage of laplace transforms and what is the purpose of laplace transforms somebody tell me what is the purpose of laplace transforms not from the examination point of view in engineering what is the problem that laplace transform is addressing exactly right so solving the differential equations yes laplace transforms has got very great advantage in solving the differential equations and the main purpose of the laplace transforms is to solve the differential equations and the integral equations now in engineering almost every problem statement is built with the common words called moving changing oscillating time varying or varying so this is completely a changing phenomena all these words are actually a changing phenomena it will represent now any problem statement which was framed with these words will lead to a differential equation there is no other equation at all so it will always lead to a differential equations now the solution of the differential equation is nothing but the solution what we are looking for in the physical problem now if the solution is the differential equation so the solution we need to be finding out for the differential equation and in the normal ordinary differential equations method it is quite tough to find the solutions for certain kind of cases especially the non linear differential equations now to solve such kind of differential equations or to make the simplicity for the normal ordinary differential equations there is a there is a great tool called laplace transform which will give you the only method that is changing the differential equation into a linear equation into a polynomial equation and this is the only purpose of the laplace transform it will change the differential equation into a polynomial equation now you know certain methods to solve the polynomial equations but the differential equations may be tough to solve but the polynomial equation may be easy to solve that is the greatest advantage of laplace transforms got it understood or not so why we are learning the laplace transforms is just to change the differential equation into a polynomial equation and solve the polynomial equation and then convert back to the original time domain equation so here laplace transform is a tool or an operator which will convert from one particular variable to another variable so that is that usually the time domain equation to frequency domain here f of t is converted into f of s format so this is the frequency complex frequency this is a complex frequency yes usually a complex number and t is the time so the time domain function is converted into a frequency domain function and here the way we convert is that is the laplace transform of f of t is converted into the laplace transform form is f of s or f bar of s so whatever the convenience you can use that so f bar of s is nothing but the variable here it is t here it's a different function it's not f so the converted function of f into the frequency domain s got it so this is the laplace transform in mathematics if at all you find an operator definitely you will be so you will be having the inverse operator for it here laplace is a operator which will convert time domain to the frequency domain then there has to be an inverse operator 
which will convert this Laplace transformed function to the time domain function. So this is f of t. So the way we have done for the differentiation is an operator d by dx is an operator which will convert the function into the differential domain and exactly in the opposite manner there will be an integral operator which will convert a differentiated function into the normal function. So differential rate is so d by dx is, is an operator and exactly in the counter way there will be an integral there operator. So these two work oppositely exactly in the similar manner Laplace transform is an operator the inverse of that has to be there so that you can bring into the original format. Suppose if you take logarithm log is an operator anti log is an inverse operator. So this way in mathematics as and when there is a requirement to define an operator there has to be an inverse operator as well. Such kind of operators are certain examples are this Laplace transform derivatives log anti log all those things are the such kind of applications what we are using in mathematics. So but the base root is all these things actually we are bringing into picture only to simplify the problem statement that's it. We are simplifying the problem statement we are giving the solutions in a better way that's it. Finally what we are targeting is to solve an engineering problem nothing more than that. Right? So you can note down this. So the operator has to be defined but the inverse operator has to be built from the definition. Right? Once you note down this I am going to define the Laplace transform. That is the purpose of Laplace transforms. Now actually the way we define the Laplace transform is Laplace transform of any function f of t is defined as integral 0 to infinite e power minus st f of t dt this is the Laplace transform definition. Now this will convert into a function of f of s alone because this is a definite integral. Limits 0 to infinity. This is a definite integral and this is the function which has to be converted into Laplace domain. And this yes plays critical role. This is the parameter. can be a complex constant also. So this is the definition of Laplace transform. Now with this definition you will be able to find as long as if you are able to find the integral of it. So any function you can think of as long as if you are able to find out this integral value e power minus s to f of t then you should be able to solve that integral. Now I will take one function let us say the Laplace transform of the constant 1. So the Laplace transform of constant 1 is integral 0 to infinity e power minus st and in, in place of f of t the constant 1 and then dt. So this integral value is coming out to be e power minus st divided by minus s and the upper limit is infinite lower limit is 0 then it will be 0 minus e power 0 by minus s this is equal to 1 by s. Got it? This is how actually we will be finding the Laplace transform. For any function as long as if you are able to find out the integral value you will be able to find out the Laplace transform. So if you notice this is the function in time domain. So anyway this is a constant it does not matter whether it is some time domain or not. But the result that is coming out to be a function of s. So that's why this is usually represented as f of s or capital F of s or small f bar of s. So all the terms 
represents the exactly the same. But you have to notice that this f is different from the original function f. Got it? Now, what is the Laplace transform of t? Usually, the Laplace transform, right? Most of the times that we are using this Laplace transform while converting from time domain to the frequency domain. So that's why the standard convention is usually we use the variable t rather than x. Right? But it serves the same purpose. Now what is the Laplace transform of t? What is the Laplace transform of t? by f square. How? So, this is you need to find out the integral value. Integral 0 to infinity t into e power minus st dt. And this integral value you have to find it out and substitute the limits you are going to end with 1 by s square. Now, what is the Laplace transform of t square? the Laplace transform of t square 2 by c cube. What is the Laplace transform of t cube? is the Laplace transform of t cube. In general, the Laplace transform of t power n is n factorial divided by s power n plus 1. This is the Laplace transform of, for the base functions, you can remember. But if you are able to solve this, you will be able to find the Laplace transform without having any doubt. This is normal UV formula you need to be applying. That is by parts. Integration by parts you have to do it. And then you can substitute the limits you are going to end it. Hope I don't need to do this. Right? So you can note down this. I am going to list down some of the base formulas. Laplace transform of t power n is equal to n factorial divided by s power n plus 1. Laplace transform of e power a t 1 by s minus a. Laplace transform of sin a t this is a by s square plus a square. Laplace transform of cos a t is s by s square plus a square. Laplace transform of sin h a t a by s square minus a square. Laplace transform of cos h a t is s by s square minus a square. So, these are the basic formulas of Laplace transform. Now, actually, can you prove what is the Laplace transform of e power a t? To prove this, what is the Laplace transform of e power a t? This is one of the important property which we call as the first shifting property. First, you find out what is the Laplace transform of e power a t. I hope you should be able to do that. This is simple integration. So let me find it. So Laplace transform of e power a t is nothing but integral 0 to infinity e power minus s t into the function value is e power a t dt. So this is integral 0 to infinity e power minus s into s minus a into t into dt. So e power minus s t e power a t if I add it together e power minus s plus a. 
So if you take minus out e power minus s minus a into t. Now let s minus a is equal to p. And this is s minus a. So the limits values when s is zero. Yeah. So you can just okay. You don't need to change the limits. So integral zero to infinity e power minus p t dt. So here limits actually you are not changing because s minus a is a parameter, not a variable. So s minus a you can replace with a another parameter called p. Now actually I have got the parameter value p. Now here this is nothing but Laplace transform of e power so Laplace transform of one with the parameter p. So this is nothing but e f bar of p. F bar of p. Now f bar of s actually we found when the constant is one, right? So the Laplace transform of one is found to be one by s. Here one by s instead of that it is one by p because it is a function of p now. So but p is equal to s minus a. This is nothing but one by s minus a. Got it? or not in general Laplace transform of e power a t into f of t so this is nothing but integral 0 to infinity e power minus s t into e power a t into f of t dt so this is integral 0 to infinity e power minus s minus a into t into f of t dt. Now this is as if like s became s minus a but it is a Laplace transform of f of t only. So this is if you replace with p integral 0 to infinity e power minus dt e power minus pt f of t dt. So this is nothing but Laplace transform of f of t with parameter p. Now but p is nothing but s minus a. So this is as if like changing the variable to s minus a. Just a minute I am getting a call. So you understood right. So this is what we call as the first shifting property. So this first shifting property what it says is suppose if you know the Laplace transform of any function f of t then the Laplace transform of the function f of t getting multiplied with e power a t nothing but replacement of the Laplace transform s with s minus a that's it that's what we call as a first shifting property got it so note down this this is the proof for the first shifting property. So this topic won't take much number of hours. So maximum five hours. So the sections that are involved are one is the fundamental properties of Laplace transforms and finding out the Laplace transform. Another is finding the inverse Laplace transform and convolution theorem and finding the solutions with the help of Laplace transform. These are the sections that are involved in it. So this is e power a t. So this is Laplace transform of sin a t. This is nothing but integral Laplace transform of sin a t called integral 0 to infinity e power minus s t instead of f of t this is sin a t. So this is what is the Laplace transform this? So this is you need to find out this value integral e power a t sin b t b t for now you might be aware of it already. So this value is nothing but e power a t by a square plus b square e sin b t minus a cos b t a 
a sin bt minus b cos bt. Yeah, this is the part. So you need to apply that formula and then find out. And so the limits you need to substitute in this. So this is e power minus st divided by s square plus e square into minus s into sin e a t. Sorry, sin e a t. Yeah, minus a into cos e a t. So you need to apply apply the limits zero to infinity. This will simplify to s s e a by s square plus e square. That's it. This is the Laplace transform. Similarly, the Laplace transform of cos e t exactly in the similar manner. You need to find out that, and then this integral value. If you are, if you don't remember this formula, apply by parts, integration by parts. So integration by parts is integral u dv. Is equal to u v minus integral v d u. So this is the formula that you have to use in the Laplace transform. So this is always required. So this is the only formula that we are going to use in the entire Laplace transform topic. But it to find out the Laplace transform. But most of the cases, what you do is you will depend on the basic function transform. You will try to convert every function into the basic function and then try to find out the Laplace transform of it. But it so this one, if you find the Laplace transform, it will be s by s square plus e square. Similarly, the Laplace transform of cos h a t, cos h a t is nothing but e power a t plus e power minus a t by two. So this is cos h a t. So for this, actually, you need to be finding out the Laplace transform. This is nothing but one by two into Laplace transform of e power a t plus e power minus a t. So this Laplace transform, you can use the first shifting property. e power a t is nothing but Laplace transform of one with a shifting of a. So that is one by s minus a plus one by s plus a. This is the Laplace transform. So if you simplify this, this is a by s by s square minus e square. Similarly, Laplace transform of sine h a t. Sine h a t is Laplace transform of e power e a t minus e power minus e a t divided by two. So this will be exactly the same thing, but instead of s, it will be a by s square plus e square. That's it. Minus e square. Sorry. Got it? So you know how to find out the Laplace transform of any simple function. So note down this, make it fast. Then note it down. So linearity of Laplace transforms. Linearity is nothing but it obeys the linearity principle. That is Laplace transform of a into f of t plus b into g of t is equal to a times Laplace transform of f of t plus b times Laplace transform of g of t. So this is what is called the Linearity principle. It's obeyed. By the Laplace transform. It's obeyed by the Laplace transform. First shifting property is anyway known. That is Laplace transform of f of t is equal to f of s. Then 
laplace transform of t power 80 into f of t is nothing but f of s minus a the first shifting property now based on this understanding second shifting property i am going to discuss tomorrow based on this understanding try to find out some of the laplace transform find the laplace transform of sin 2t sin 3t somebody tell me what is the laplace transform of this sin 2t into sin 3t okay, that's correct so 12 s by s square plus 1 into s square plus 25 Anybody got the same answer? Anybody got the answer? Nobody could able to solve. sin a sin b equal to 1 by 2 times of cos a minus b minus cos a plus b this is the base principle that we need to be using because you know the laplace transform of sin a t but you don't know the laplace transform of the product of two different sine functions now that's the reason we have to convert into this format now this is sin 2 t sin 3 t can be converted into 1 by 2 times of cos t minus cos phi t. Now, you know the Laplace transform of cos t is nothing but s by s square plus 1 minus s by s square plus 25. Now, the simplified form of this is 12s divided by s square plus 1 into s square plus 25. This is how you need to find out. Got it? Understood or not? Find the Laplace transform of cos square 2t. What is the Laplace transform of cos square 2t? by 8 divided by s square plus 16. I think that's correct. the Laplace transform of sin cube 2t. What is the Laplace transform of sin cube 2t? So, 
you have to be aware of this formula sin 3 theta, 3 theta is equal to p sin theta minus 4 sin cube theta. So he asked us to find out the Laplace transform of sin cube 2t. Use this formula and then try to find it out. Forty eight by S square plus four into S square plus thirty six. That's correct. Now find out what is the Laplace transform of T sin eight. T sin eight. What is the Laplace transform of T? Not many people are answering the questions. This I have to know whether you have understood or not. See this. Let us consider Laplace transform of T into E power I A T. This is nothing but Laplace transform of T into cos A T plus i sin e t. So this is from the complex principle. This is nothing but Laplace transform of t sin e t plus i times of Laplace transform of t is cos e t. This is t sin e t. Got it? Now this is Laplace transform of t sin e t. First you need to identify what is the Laplace transform of T. T is nothing but 1 by S square. So instead of S this is S plus I A whole square. Got it or not? S minus I A sorry. S minus I A whole square. This is the Laplace transform of it. Is this understood? Understood or not? This is with the help of first shifting principle. I found the Laplace transform of T is nothing but 1 by S square. So that is getting multiplied with E power E A T. So instead of A it is I A. So that is nothing but 1 by S minus I A whole square. Now what I will do is I will multiply with S plus I A whole square at the top and the bottom. This value is coming out to be at the top it will be S square minus E A square. S 2A S into I divided by S plus A into S minus A. So that is S square plus A square whole square. So this is nothing but S square minus A square divided by S square plus A square whole square plus I times of 2A S divided by S square plus A square whole square. So this is nothing but you can equate the corresponding terms. This is the Laplace transform of T cos A T. This is the Laplace transform of T sin A T. Got it? Understood? So by equating the corresponding terms at one state you will be able to find out the Laplace transform of T sin A T and T cos A T. Any questions on this? Understood or not? I find the Laplace transform of The function is defined as f of t is equal to t by tau when 0 less than t less than tau 
and this is equal to 1 when t greater than tau. Find the Laplace transform of it. I will give you 5 minutes time, try to make it and solve it on your own. Yeah, so 1 minus e power minus s tau divided by s square tau. That's correct. Now here, the way we need to proceed here it is, this is the Laplace transform, nothing but f of t is defined as integral 0 to infinity e power minus st f of t dt. So this is the Laplace transform. Now here, these limits actually needs to be divided into two different, different room roots. So that is integral 0 to tau, this function is varying as t by tau e power minus st into t by tau into dt plus tau to infinity this is varying as e power minus st into 1 dt. So this is how actually you need to find the integral and apply, apply the limits to get this answer. Got it? Now note down one more that is Laplace transform of f of t where f of t equal to mod t minus 1 plus mod t plus 1. Can you find the Laplace transform of mod t minus 1 plus mod t plus 1? It's all just finding the integral. If you are not able to find the Laplace transform means you are not able to solve the integral. That's it. anybody first you need to identify this curve how it is going to be if you notice this curve is nothing but this is x axis and this is y axis for different values of t you substitute and find out the value then this is coming out to be from minus 1 to plus 1 this will be a constant value so and the value is coming out to be so if I make it t equal to 0 this is plus 1 and this is plus 1 both will be 2 From here, it will be linear like this. This is a curve. This is a bus stub curve. Mod t minus 1 plus mod t plus 1. At t is equal to 1, there is one sharp edge. At t is equal to minus 1, there is one sharp edge. And rest of the places, it will be a linear curve. And it will be a linear curve here. It is a constant value here. Right? So now, but for finding out the Laplace transform of f of t is nothing but integral 0 to we need to start. That means you need to rule out this curve. You have to start from here only. Uh, so till this point, that is 0 to 1, value is 2. And from 1 to infinite. So this value is as if like, you can substitute the value here. So 0 to 1, this value is 2, just 2, into e power minus st, into dt, plus integral 1 to infinity. So if you notice, at 1 to infinite, this is all positive value. So, t is more than 1. That means t is equal to 2, let us say. This is a positive value. This is also a positive value. You can replace as if like there is no modulus. Because both are positive. You don't need to change the sign. So, this t, this one. So, this one, this one will cancel. This is going to be 2t. So, this is nothing but y is equal to 2t is the curve. So, here y is equal to 2 is the curve. So, this is 1 to infinite e power minus st into 2t dt. So this is the integral value we should put, you need to find it out. Got it? So 2 by s into 1 plus e power minus s divided by s. I think that is correct. Yeah. 2 by s into 1 plus e power minus s by s. That's correct. Now, I hope everybody got the answer. So this integral you have to find it out. That is a simple integral only. This is the final last question. You should be able to solve this. You solve this, 
you know how to find the laplace transform now what is the laplace transform of step of t what is the laplace transform of it where step is the greatest integer You have to solve this. First of all, you need to identify the curve, how it is going to be. So here, yeah, it will go to infinite. Exactly. Y is equal to step of t. That function is nothing but suppose. If 0.1 is there for this number, the step value is the greatest integer, which is nothing but 0. Here, let us say 1.5. The step of it is 1. So this is the part which we are going to take it up. But don't get confused. If it is a negative value, this is minus 1.5, then this will be minus 2. So if you take it on the real line, it will be on the left side of the real line. So that is, suppose this is 0 and this is 1 this is 2, this is minus 1 and this is minus 2. Now if you consider a point here, that is the greatest possible integer is below that. So that is 0. But here it is 1. Here it is 1. Suppose if you take it here, the greatest integer is this one. If you take it here, let us say minus 1.5, the greatest integer is on the left side only. So that's why step of minus 1.5 is minus 2. Step of 1.5 is plus 1. That is the difference. You notice always step x plus step of minus x will be how much? Somebody tell me what is the value of step x plus step of minus x? Somebody tell me what is the step x plus step of minus x value? not 2x. Anybody else can guess what is step x plus step of minus x? Nobody could able to guess. Value is minus 1. Here if you notice, you take this point, let us say or 1.5 I will take it. So for 1.5, step of 1.5 is plus 1, step of minus 1.5 is minus 2, plus 1 minus 2 is minus 1. If you take any other value, 3.5 let us say, or 3.2, step of 3.2 is plus 3, step of minus 3.2 is minus 4, minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. That's why if you take always step x plus step of minus x is always equal to minus 1. Got it? So this is how you will be finding it out. Now the greatest possible integer value if you draw it on the curve then this will be like a step that's why we call this as a step integral. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and this is 5. Now here whatever the value you consider in between this will always lead to the greatest positive integer of 0 and whatever the value you consider in between 1 and 2 the greatest value is always plus 1. So this is plus 1 and from here 1 to 2 it is always plus 2. here this is always plus 3. So this is always plus 4. So this is how the curve it will be. So that's why this is called as a step. So it's like a step. That's why step x. Got it? So now actually if you want to find out the integral of it, this value integral 0 to infinity step x into or step of t into e power minus t dt. So this value you can integral divide you can it. So 0 to 1. This is 0 into e power minus st dt plus 1 to 2, this value will be 1. So this is e power minus st into 1 into dt plus 2 to 3, this is e power minus st into 2 into dt plus integral 
3 to 4, this will be e power minus s2 into 3 into dt plus dash 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 up to infinite. Got it? So this value, you can find out the integral for it. So this integral will be, first integral will be 0 plus second integral will be e power minus s t by minus s. The upper limit will be 2 and lower limit will be 1 plus. So this integral will be e power minus s t divided by minus s and this is 2. The upper limit will be upper limit will be 3 and lower limit will be 2. Plus 3 times of so this is e power minus s t by minus s and upper limit will be 4 and lower limit will be 3 plus dash 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 up to infinite. Now you will have to substitute the limits and then this is minus so 1 by minus s you can take it out minus 1 by s if you take it out this is upper limit will be e power minus 2s minus e power s minus s plus 2 times of this is e power minus 3s minus e power minus 2s plus 3 times of e power minus 4s minus e power minus 3s plus dash 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 up to infinite this is if you take it out e power minus 2s here and e power 2 times of e power minus 2s there. Here if you take one more minus out this is 1 by s times of e power minus s plus e power minus 2s plus e power minus 3s plus e power minus 4s plus dash 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 up to infinite. Right? So, so this term and this term this term. It will be cancelled out and there will be only one e power minus 2s will be left over. That's what I kept it here. Now if you take from the second step, this is 3 times of e power minus 3s. This is 2 times of e power minus 3s. Now plus 2 and minus 3 is leads to minus 1. So that minus 1 I have taken it out. So this is 1 by s. Now this is a geometric progression. A geometric progression for an infinite sum. This is a by 1 minus r. So that is 1 by s is out and then a is the first term e power minus s. And the common ratio is e power minus 2s by minus s is e power minus s. So 1 by 1 minus e power minus s. This is the Laplace transform of it. Clear? Any questions? Clear or not? So as a homework, you take it. Find the Laplace transform of a periodic function of time of period t. Find the Laplace transform of of a periodic function of period capital T. You take that as a homework. So this is about the, the basic introduction of Laplace transforms and finding out the Laplace transform of some of the basic functions. Now in tomorrow's class we are going to discuss what are the some of the basic principles or the theorems that are involved in finding out the Laplace transform which will make our work simpler for finding the Laplace transform. So after that we are going to discuss the inverse Laplace transform. Clear? Any questions on this? Any questions on this? So, this you take as the assignment. So, that's all for today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good night.